Ah, uh, the Mariana Trench. This place, located in the Philippine Sea just off the coast of the Mariana Islands, is the deepest part of the ocean. It's actually so deep that Mount Everest will be completely submerged under two kilometers of water if you somehow manage to throw it in there. Naturally, people don't know much about it, but we are here to remedy that. Today, we bring you 10 Mariana Trench facts that will blow your mind. Did you know that only three people have descended to the deepest part of the trench? Heck, one of them isn't even an explorer. Find out number one. Number 10. A place of extreme temperatures. As you go further and further down into the depths of the ocean, the temperature gets steadily colder. It gets especially cold down in the dark and abysmal waters of the Mariana Trench. Temperatures there constantly hover at just above freezing, somewhere between 1 degree Celsius to 4 degrees Celsius. But there are certain parts of the trench that have temperatures on the opposite side of that scale. This is if you venture close to the hydrothermal vents that litter the trench roughly a mile down. In a world where the water is one or two steps away from turning to ice, there are several vents that shoot out water close to 450 degrees Celsius. Otherwise known as black smokers, the water in these vents shoot out tons of minerals that help life in the area survive and thrive. The creatures that call the trench home need these minerals and the energy they produce, as even one mile down is too far for the sun to have any effect on them. It's either hang around the super hot water or perish. Quite amazingly, this extremely hot water doesn't boil. This is due to the extremely high pressures down there. And speaking of high pressures, number nine, a high pressure situation. Pressure exerted by water that deep is tremendous. According to scientists down in the trench, you can experience up to 1100 times the pressure you would experience at sea level. To put that into perspective, if you can somehow get 100 elephants to stand on your head, you'd get an idea on how much pressure we're talking about there. The pressure is so high that it actually increases the density of water to about 5%. That means if you take a 1 liter bottle of water then dive down into the trench, by the time you get there, the water in your bottle would be down to 9.5 liters. Such extreme pressure should make it impossible for life to develop down there, but there are a few creatures that thrive under pressure and make the Mariana Trench their home, one of which might surprise you. Number 8. Clams live there. The intense water pressure down in the trench makes it difficult for anything with a hard shell or bones to survive, hence the abundance of sea cucumbers and giant amoeba. Yes, you heard me right, and we'll get to those later on. If you stuck a turtle down there, it would almost certainly end up crushed by its own shell. Of course, the recent discovery of shelled animals in the trench, such as clams, should put a damper on this little stereotype. Discovered in early 2012, these clams largely reside near serpentine hydrothermal vents. The serpentine rock is rich with life-giving minerals such as hydrogen and methane, which allows life to form around it. Nobody yet knows for sure how the clams evolved their shells to be so sturdy under pressure, and unfortunately, they're not talking. However, water pressure aside, these vents exude another gas, hydrogen sulfide. That is normally lethal to clams and other mollusks. Luckily for them, though, they have evolved the ability to bind the sulfide to harmless proteins, thereby nullifying its toxicity and allowing the deep-sea clam population to survive. Number 7. A little bit of the bubbly. Most of the hydrothermal vents mentioned previously spew nothing but regular, albeit extremely hot water. So hot that it'll actually singe your skin if you get anywhere near it. One vent, however, raises the game to an utterly ridiculous level, releasing not water, but pure liquid carbon dioxide. Outside of the Okinawa Trough near Taiwan, the Champagne Vent of the Mariana Trench is the only known underwater area where liquid carbon dioxide exists. Discovered in early 2005, the vent got its name because of the bubbles of what scientists originally thought was harmless water. Upon closer inspection, they realized that those bubbles were actually CO2. While ingesting pure carbon dioxide would clearly be bad news for any of us, it seems that vents such as this one called white smokers due to their lower temperatures might be the source of life itself. As the old primordial soup theory loses more and more ground, the idea that life began in deep waters around vents such as the Champagne has gained more credibility. A white smoker such as champagne with its lower temperatures and abundance of chemicals and energy could well provide the perfect recipe for life to form and thrive. Number 6. There isn't a sandy bottom down there. A lot of people love the sensation of wet sand under their feet. You would think that the entire ocean would be covered with it, but you thought wrong. 
If you happen to keep swimming deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, all the way down to the depths of the trench, the ground would suddenly feel very, very different. That's because, thanks to everything that trickles down from the miles above, everything in the trench is covered in a blanket of icky, viscous ooze. Sand as we know it doesn't really exist down there. In its place is, well, something that I could only describe as the remnants of death and decay. Man, that description is just metal. The floor of the trench is comprised mainly of crushed shells and corpses of plankton that have sunk to the bottom over the years. Due to the immense water pressure, everything pretty much ends up ground into a fine, grayish-yellow, almost silky sludge. Considering how long the trench has been around, being considered by many scientists as the oldest part of the ocean, one can only wonder how deep the ooze floor goes down before Earth actually begins. All I know is this would make an awesome metal album. Number 5. There are bridges there. In late 2011, four rock bridges were found in the Mariana Trench, stretching from one end to the other measuring roughly 69 kilometers long. It appears that a meeting of the Pacific and Philippine tectonic plates formed the bridges. The Pacific plate ended up underneath the Philippine plate, and the seamount material that both sides brought along collided into various structures on the other side, turning it into what we see today. One of the bridges, Dutton Ridge, was discovered back in the 1980s, though only in low-res pictures. It certainly helped matters that Dutton Ridge is incredibly tall, almost like a small mountain. At its highest peak, the ridge reaches 2.5 kilometers above the Challenger Deep. Of course, that's still more than 8 kilometers under the water. Researchers' ability to find something in a trench that up until recently was a near-complete mystery is truly astounding. Like so many other aspects of the trench, we don't yet know what the purpose of these bridges serve. After all, fish don't need bridges. Number 4. It's the largest marine reserve in the world. There is life at the incredible depths of the trench. Although new species as old as the dinosaurs are observed in the Mariana Trench, some of them have not been identified to date. But in a world as desolate and inhospitable like the trench, just how do these creatures survive? Most of the creatures that live in the depths of the Mariana Trench are fed by one another or by the dead rain, which is organic matter from dead animals that live in shallower waters. Thus, the remains of various dead sea creatures are slowly descending from the surface waters as feed for animals living in the depths of the Mariana Trench. Because of the status of nature reserves, fishing and mining within the boundaries are prohibited. This vast area spanning over the area of 246,000 square kilometers has also been designated as the U.S. National Monument by an act signed by the U.S. President George Walker Bush in 2009. Number 3. The Rarest Element The underwater Daikoku volcano lies roughly 1360 feet down into the trench. That might not sound too impressive since the trench goes down another six and a half miles or so. Also, there are literally thousands of underwater volcanoes dotting the world's oceans. But Daikoku happens to contain one of the rarest sites on the planet, a lake of pure molten sulfur. Just to give you an idea on how rare the element existing in this form is, the only other place that houses such a thing is, lo and behold, one of the moons of Jupiter. Dubbed the Cauldron for obvious reasons, this pit of bubbling black goo burns at a sweltering 187 degrees Celsius. We have not yet been able to study it in a lot of detail, though the white smoke that emanates from one of the surrounding craters suggests that there might be more sulfur down there than in just the cauldron. If there is, the entire area might just hold the key to determining the origins of life. This comes from the Gaia Hypothesis, a long-standing but oft-criticized view of the world, which contends that the entire planet is a singular self-regulating entity, where all life and non-life comes together to help keep it alive. Researchers hope that by capturing some of this sulfur and releasing it into the atmosphere, they can see if it both survives and cycles to land. If so, then there may be something to Gaia after all, and sulfur might be the reason Earth supports and maintains life. Now it's time for the day's best pick. Today we're going to be discussing the possibility of prehistoric sea monsters existing down in the Mariana Trench. Spoiler alert, they do, but not the kind of sea monsters that you would expect. Find out next on... Number 2. A Land of Giants Yes, it's indeed true. Giants dwell in the Mariana Trench, but not the ones that you're expecting like the Megalodon or Liapleurodon. Nevertheless, they are equally, or maybe even more, terrifying. But first, what immediately comes to mind when you hear the phrase, single-celled organism? If you're like the rest of the world, you'd probably think of microscopic bacteria, and you would be right. That is how nature designed them. However, the design plans might not have reached whoever made these giants that live in the trench. Meet the Xenophyophores, a type of amoeba that is four inches big. These single-celled organisms have likely become so big precisely because of their environment. 
The cold temperature, high pressure, and lack of sunlight all contribute to this amoeba's relatively nightmarish size. If that's not enough, they also appear to be superhuman, immune to many elements and chemicals that would kill most other species, including our own. By ingesting the minerals and particles in the water, the xenophyophores have developed a tolerance to uranium, mercury, lead, and other things that could kill us if left unchecked. Also, don't think you'd eventually stop seeing these adorable critters the deeper you got. They've been spotted as deep as 10 kilometers down, and scientists would not be surprised to one day find them even deeper than that. I saved the best for last, but first, I have a quick challenge that takes only 5 seconds to complete. If you can leave a like and subscribe within the next 5 seconds, you'll get 10 years of amazing luck. Just try it, it really worked. Number 1. James Cameron was here. Yes, you heard that right. The director of one of the biggest movies in history is a fan of the real-life ocean as well, and has actually manned his own solo expedition to the bottom of the trench. Since its discovery in 1875, the deepest part of the trench, known as the Challenger Deep, has played host to a whopping three people. The first two, Don Walsh and Jacques Picard, made it to the bottom on January 23, 1960. Because their ship was named the Challenger, they named their new kingdom the Challenger Deep. Nobody knows where the deep part of the name came from, though. Over 52 years passed before another explorer braved the frigid, crushing waters, and that explorer just happened to be a movie director. On March 26, 2012, Cameron made it to the bottom and snapped several pictures, the first shots ever taken of the Challenger Deep. While there are several planned trips to the deep, none have ever been officially scheduled as of yet. This makes Cameron the most recent guy to reach the deepest point in the world. Did you enjoy this fact overload? Let us know in the comments section down below. Want to watch more videos about our amazing world? Click on any of the videos you see on your screen. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Later, everybody!